Well, Israeli scientists have successfully wired a locust ear into a robot and say the breakthrough could pave the way for animal parts to become microphones and cameras of the future. The robot at Tel Aviv University listens to sounds around it using the ear of a dead locust. Researchers behind the breakthrough say it is the first time a sense organ has been integrated into electronics. Let's speak with Dr. Ben Maoz from the Department of Biomedical Engineering at Tel Aviv University. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me. So how does this technology actually work? So actually the idea is that uh, currently the human being is trying to, to develop sensors that uh, nature was able to develop through millions of years of evolution. So the insect world actually has amazing sensors that we are not even able to, to be close to them uh, with the, the current technology. And what we were trying to do, we were trying to actually take such sensors uh, from, the, from, from the insect uh, kingdom and to integrate them with the actual robot. So actually what we did was take the earring system of, uh, of a locust and to use it as a sensor for a real robot. So imagine that you have your home uh, rumba that actually it can move by listening to a real sound with a real biological ear. So this is, wow. this is the main concept. So you've successfully experimented with locusts, but what are the ultimate possibilities here? So, so definitely um, most people will, will ask, well, why do we need to, to, have, to use the, actually the ear system if we have such good microphones and speakers? So since this project was so ambitious, we started with something that is relatively easy or easy air by actually being able to compare the, 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 the ear from the locus to a, to a microphone. But you have other sensors such as the nose that we are not even close with today's technology to mimic the sensing capabilities of a nose. Uh, insects are able to separate between millions of chemicals, different odors, and uh, they are very, very sensitive with, with this specific example. And we're not even able to, 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 to mimic such sensors with today's technology. And I have to ask, has there been any uh, pushback from animal activists over this technology, this research? So first of all, we'll start by saying that obviously we are doing everything with all the authorizations and all the, the, the things according to the, to the guidelines of uh, Israel and, and, and the world. And also what we're doing, we're uh, using insects that uh, um, by with all the, the this issue are, are different than using obviously dogs or cats or things like this. Uh, actually, locust is actually a problem in the world that people are trying to migrate. Uh, and I, I can give you another example that, uh, for example, using the sense of a mosquito. Mosquito can sense uh, really, really tiny differences in the CO2, right? They know immediately how to identify us and to, to, to suck our blood because they are really, really sensitive uh, with identifying really, really small changes with CO2 in the air. So this is another example of an insect that people will rather see that will disappear in that sense and uh, not, uh, and, 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 and yes, regarding this question. It's really amazing the way nature can inspire us. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it and best of luck. Thank you very much for inviting us.